five, four, three. It's the internet. You're it's busy. It's the internet. You're busy. <laughs> Let's do this for March 29th, 2024, for the next hour or so. Let me help you sort through the world of gaming on Game Mess Mornings Live with me, Tamar Hussain. Today, a huge Capcom franchise is set to return, and hundreds of people are working on a sequel to The Witcher. But first, please join me in welcoming today's co host to Game Mess Mornings. It's Jeff Grubb, everyone. Hello. How's it going? Tim! How you doing, Jeff? I'm doing great. I'm doing I'm doing fantastic now. I'm kicking back. I put my feet up. <laughs> it's a, it's a late was... birthday present for me. Hell yeah. yeah there we exactly. go. I've always uh, wanted to do that. So No, I'm glad you did. That was fantastic. That was perfect. <laughs> oh, Tam, uh, I am ready for the weekend. So it's been uh it, it was kind of nonstop for me. It's been even more nonstop for you. Uh it's been a wild one. It's been a wild one. So, you know, you know, kind of going to PAX felt like work at the end of the day and so it's like all right this weekend i'm actually going to just sit around and do nothing that's the plan how about you yeah i exactly that i am i'm excited to sit down and um i'm off to england next week um so i'm planning i'm gonna be gone for like two weeks or so and i'm planning i haven't had a weekend to, to myself in ages so i'm just like this weekend i'm gonna stick on dragon's yeah. dogma yes and see if i can play some of that I, uh, oh God, I've been influenced by one Jeff Grubb. Oh, hell yeah, that's um, what I like to hear. What happened? I bought a, are you like, is this, is everyone still calling them Chinese handhelds? I mean, they, they, I, I, I say it in a uh, very endearing loving way. way and an endearing yeah, yeah. way. I love that there are like 50 of these, uh, uh, you know, manufacturing plants in China that are pumping these things out. I think yeah. that's, I think it's awesome. Uh, some people might do it in a derogatory way, and I would hope they don't because the, yeah. they're doing great work over there. I I bought I bought the Miu, whatever it's called, the Miu Mini. Mini Plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I isn't it so one. cute? It's so cute. I haven't got it yet. It's coming oh, today. Okay, fantastic. It's coming today because uh, I messaged. I know Jan got one uh, during the uh, the panel PAX panel, and I was like, I want one of those. Yeah, and then and then I got like TikToked. Yes, right. The oh, right. Okay, you got the. T- yes, yes, they everywhere. Like Every, the TikTok lives. It turned into uh, QVC so hard on TikTok. It's it pro- wild. Yeah, uh, and now like part of it is like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll see the Chinese handouts, and I'm like, yeah, man, I love these things. That's cool. Uh, and then sometimes we'd be like, that that lady is obviously just playing a YouTube video in the background. Those buttons, she is not pressing those buttons <laughs> no, in the right way. No. And I kind of like but, that too. But it's wild how much it turned to QVC. But it also works. I've definitely bought like sometimes. three things on TikTok now. Yeah, so I bought one of those. It's funny because I also have the analog pocket, which right. kind of, but this miu mini i have seen i texted jan i was like how are you liking it he was like honestly i don't know how this is working like i don't know how it's doing this uh-huh. i'm like oh, okay cool um and apparently like it plays playstation one games really it does. well it does play playstation one games really well here's the secret though if you go to a man named um god what, what is it retro game core on uh youtube and look up his thing about installing Onion OS on the MiU Mini Plus. Oh. It, it really improves the performance. It improves the UX. It improves everything. I didn't do this for Jans. I kind of wish I would have before I would have given it to him. But it's like you, you can put, get even more out of it. Did you put some extra titles on there? Uh, no, because, you know, the thing comes with like 5,000 games pre-installed because... Oh, great. Fantastic. Care. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know what? Shout out to China. Shout out to for China. This, for real. For specific yeah. thing. They you got our what? backs here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're doing the stuff that matters. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, so I've got one of those coming. I was sitting in bed yesterday playing the um, Analog Pocket as well. Um, busting out some Metal Gear Ghost Babble and a little bit of Zero oh, yeah. Mission. Oh, yeah. Metroid Zero Mission. The Analog Pocket is such a nice little thing. Oh, yeah. Um, for real. And, and it does have a lot of the uh, FPGA cores now where you can do a lot more with it. Um, and I do, I do, do do a ton of that stuff, but, um, having the, the little handheld that is an emulation device that can do all, up to PlayStation one, or, you know, some of them do up to Dreamcast and PS2 and GameCube. Uh, those are a little bit more expensive. And the one I got Jan doesn't have like analog sticks and stuff. So he's going to do about right. up to PlayStation one. Uh, I don't know, having that and just being able to st- install whatever you want and know it's going to work. That's pretty handy. I think. Yeah. I also yeah, like dug out. I was like, Oh, do I have a 3ds? I dug one of those. It uh, turns out I got three 3DSs. <laughs> have you? I mean, 
you know, and I'm looking to like, yeah, 3ds hack dot, that hack, dot guides dot or yeah, 3ds dot hacks dot guide. Honestly, just follow that. It is yeah. so nice. And you know, the eShop is closed. It's done. You can't do anything with that thing anymore. So you might as well hack it. And it, I did yeah. that with mine. I really do not regret it at all. I wanna, I wanna put um, like basically all the puzzle games on here. And like, just give it to someone who I'm trying to get into games yeah, a little bit, and really? be like, "Oh, I know you like games. Um, I, I know you like puzzles. So, like, put the um, stuff like the Phoenix Wrights and the, the Professor Layton's and maybe the the Brain Age Brain Training stuff on there, and see see whether see whether whether they like it and take to it." Yeah, I think um, uh, yeah. I think that'd be a good fit for that sort of thing. Um, yeah, and there, I mean, the Miu Mini Plus is like actually, I think the slightly larger one. There is, I think, a Miu Mini uh, that is even tinier and cuter. Uh, I, it would be a li- like a little bit less comfortable for our our gigantic man hands between yeah. you and Jan. But um, if you are handed off to a kid or someone with smaller hands, I think those little ones are are really fun. Uh, and th- but those ones apparently sell out all the time. Uh, the Miu Mini Plus seems to be in stock all the time now. So yeah, it's fairly easy to get the Miu. Um, yeah, I got my, I, I, I got was the one for Jan on Amazon, and it was here like a day. That's later. exactly what I did. Yeah, that's exactly what I did. I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to go through like Timu or something wild uh-huh. like that. I've done, and I've done that before for previous yeah. handhelds, like the Retroid Pocket. I have ordered directly from China, and it took a few yeah. weeks, and you know it was worth it in the end. I really like those devices, uh, but seeing that they are so popular that they're now just in stock on amazon for one day yeah. shipping i'm like oh okay i'm i am very happy that we're here and it does yeah. like based on the way it is always like five different people are live streaming selling these things on TikTok on my feed every single day it seems like they're selling very well i i hope it doesn't get too saturated and people don't feel burned or something and then the, the, this all yeah. goes away i hope they can kind of maintain this for quite some time yeah, it does feel like the 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 marketing department is in overdrive for this wild little Chinese handheld uh, parentheses yep. positive. Yep. Yes, um, parentheses positive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, um, but yeah. yeah, I'm excited to get get it and like just throw it in my bag and just have it. I also have like the Ambonic from yeah. uh, a little while back, which is good, but the screen is ass. So um, yeah, Amber, the screen's got much better, and that's the thing about that Miu Mini Plus is the screen is big and and vibrant and takes up like the whole front, and yeah, it's really nice. And it's you know, did you get the the vertical uh, one that's like a Game Boy or the yes, horse? I got, I got okay. the the purple Game Boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah, I was I was very happy to see that translucent purple. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. I can't. I, uh, I can't wait. I did hand that one to to Jan, and then I was like, man, I should have just got one for myself too even though i have way too many of these things so we'll see that's they're like uh, my one like on amazon it's like 80 dollars. yeah which right, i yes, mean that's how, yes, in, that's how much it costs. in san francisco that's like a meal yeah from uber <laughs> eats <laughs> yeah and you know there's uh i think amber nick actually put out a comp- competing one that is getting better and it's like 56 you know the 60 dollars something like that so yeah people could shop around. i had and in, in the, my three, this annoying thing. Yes, I don't know what happened to me yesterday. Where I was like, I just want to mess with my old consoles and play old games. So I was like, I had to. I, I was setting up the emulators again. Yeah, I spent ages trying to find the like power cable, charging cable for my 3ds, and could not find one. So I had to order a new one. That's a pain. And, yeah, yeah, it's a pain in the ass. But the, I'm getting one that's arriving that is like it's compatible with every version of the 3ds. Oh, that's good. So I was like, oh, great. Yeah, because they, they did change that up like halfway through. That was annoying. Um, I, yeah. I can't find my DS Lite. That's the one that's bothering me. I have, my, uh, I have a DSi, uh, or the D, what is the, the DS? Uh, they did the DS. Yeah, DSi is the, the upgraded one. I have that, but I want to find the DS Lite for my kids because I yeah. just got the R4 card in there and yeah. playing a bunch of games. But Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, before we get into the mess, let's explain what we do here. Most weeks, <laughs> I, Tamur Hussain, will help you piece your gaming life back together. That includes breaking news and maybe even some of our own original reporting. For all these topics, I'll get the input from a bona fide expert who will join to make me look smart. That is Jeff Grubb. Hi. If you're watching live on Twitch, welcome. You can always listen to the show later on podcast feeds by searching for Game Mess Mornings or find the RSS on giantbomb.com. You can also catch the show later with chapters and timestamps on youtube hello youtube if you're watching on there please be sure to hit that like button we've got a lot to get into but first i need to let my cat out and turn the lights on let's start the morning mess with monster hunter wilds is planned for q1 2025 and insider claims this comes from chris scullion at vgc 
Monster Hunter Wilds is planned for release in the first quarter of 2025, it is claimed. Insider Dusk Gollum, who has a long track, re track record of reporting information about video games before it has been made public, especially stuff from Capcom, shared information on the game on their own Discord server as spotted on Reddit. Oh my god damn. Uh, Dusk Gollum claimed to be hearing a lot of things about the game from various sources and said that from what, we, what they were hearing, it was shaping up to be by far the biggest game Capcom has ever attempted. According to their sources, the game has been in development since early 2019, shortly after the release of Monster Hunter World. They claim that a lot of the scrapped ideas from World are here, and that the big Godzilla monsters, which is believed to refer to Zora Magdaros, Magdaros from World, will be returning. They have also said that the game is fully open world and is experimenting far more with the concept than Monster Hunter World or Rise did, and that while this could be considered a risk, the feedback is stellar so far. Um, well, we know they're making more on Monster Hunter. We knew that. It, it, this timing sounds right to me, Tam. I guess um, them going in a new direction, I, I, it's an evolved direction, right, for Monster Hunter, for them to go open a world. Yeah. It makes sense, right? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like uh, the, the trajectory of Monster Hunter is somewhat predictable. Um, parentheses positive. Mm -hmm. uh, you can always see like how the the next step coming. Um, I think like the one like uh, pivot that I did not expect was the Monster Hunter game on um, uh, Switch. I forgot what it's called now. Uh, uh, Rise, right? Rise, Rise. Yeah. That was the one where I was like, oh, okay, this is a little bit different, and maybe Monster Hunter stories. But in terms of the mainline franchise, which it seems like this is th th that's what they're talking about here. Um, this is a very, very predictable and the right thing to do, like pushing the boundaries on, on what, what Monster Hunter players want a bit more, making the monsters bigger. I love the idea of the kind of like kaiju uh, phase being being the big thing for the new one. Um, it just means that I, I hope what they're doing now is like really drilling down on the cooperative element of it right. and having these massive monsters be like, oh, you need you need to have a big team and you need to be on point to take down something like this. I love the idea of like a group of four people going up against what is effectively Godzilla and having to beat that, that creature. I think that's really, really clever. And I think um, it's the kind yeah. of thing where if you put that in a uh, open world that is, you know, uh, um, comparative to dragon's dogma 2 yeah where you know you can be you can be tra you know traipsing around with your friends through the woods or through the jungle and then something giant can come stomping stomping through from anywhere that feels like where monster hunter was always headed um it also feels yeah. like it, i could see why people would be super into that and i think that'd yeah. be very exciting so yeah this this makes a ton of sense i also think um you know, Dusk Gollum goes on to say here that they are, like, there's been no real problems with development and that they are pretty dead set on sticking to this release of Q1 of, I, I believe, calendar 2025. I don't think that means they're awesome. fiscal. Uh, so, and that would mean, yeah, like, the like January, February, or March, something. That's Capcom, the Capcom month. Cap Cap yeah. Capcom months, right? They do that, yeah. and then they the game sells the entire year, and they, that seems to be what they're trying to do here as well, according to Dusk Gollum. They want to have something comes out early in the year yeah. and just sells and sells, gets another bump in the holidays like these games always do, especially something like Monster Hunter, which is a game that's like, oh, yeah, my, you know, I'm playing that. My friends are playing that. I, you know, I'm going to get on this. So I'm going to wait for a sale, I guess, and I'll pick it up later. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think that this all kind of lines up with, with what, what we're expecting. And, you know, Capcom is in a position where they have, they did World, they did Rise, and it's been a couple years since Rise now. And they yeah. don't take that long to get new Monster Hunter games out. That they have been a machine putting Monster Hunter games out for more than a decade now, longer at, than that. At high quality as well. High quality. That's probably that's probably worth saying. Yep. Yeah. It's it's. I'm really interested to see how it affects design, like fully open world, because the kind of um, the pacing of the game uh in the zone structure is very specific like and, right. and the format of you know a monster escaping into another zone is is a core part of what the right. monster hunter experience is i i do wonder what it's going to be like to have i assume a fully open world with no loading times where you're constantly chasing this monster um and and not like having to wait like with transitions going between point to point i mean like rise did some of that and and that's it was mostly fine but 
I wonder if there's more fundamental changes that will happen or, or like there'll be knock-on effects that will happen to the design of Monsanto. But Capcom right now is absolutely cooking. Yes. Like there's they're on a heater. They are they are not they are not slowing down and everything they put out is a banger. Yep. I can't remember the last bad Capcom game, you know. I mean, um, you know, even I, I enjoyed Exo Primal, right? That was them. Yeah, I I would say Exo Primal is probably the closest you come to see it, but it still feels like a good Capcom game because yeah. it's experimental in the it feels like PS2 era Capcom, where they were like, We came up with this experimental, uh, yes. Yeah, hopefully it, if that game is their modern lost planet, basically. And if it had hit harder, I bet you there'd be another one. But yeah, at least they tried, and that's that's cool. Right, um, I you know talking about like you know chasing off the uh, the the monsters as they go into other zones, then having to having to follow follow them there. Um, they do mention in uh, Dusk Golem in this report on their Discord. Uh, this announcement is just the start, so there's a lot about the game we don't go into detail about yet. Oh, this is actually I'm sorry, this is actually from the producer. Uh, and who I guess at one time said the game features a new level of detailed creatures and ecosystems. So please enjoy dissecting the trailer to get an idea of what to expect. Um, I could see them like modeling systems for these ecosystems uh, because they have the open world and the interconnectedness of, of, of what that could entail, especially after playing Dragon's Dogma 2, a game that is filled with systems and then being like, yeah, how would we evolve, you know, these different biomes that are right next to each other, you know, and connected through loading screens in previous Monster Hunter games, what would happen if they were connected and you could push things one from the other? Could you force a monster into a zone where they're weakened or could they retreat to a zone where they'd be even stronger or something like that? And then how would the other monsters around them react? And could that be more dynamic? I could easily see them leaning into something along those lines yeah. while also keeping also, the, the very rigid systems that make Monster Hunter work. Yeah, and I imagine they're if it, if they haven't started, uh, they hadn't done it already by now, or they, they'll start further exploring like this the sea and the sky stuff. Where it's yep. like the next step is obviously like underwater fighting and maybe like in flying monsters and that kind of stuff and doing the whole shadow of the Colossus, three people, three of your mates just being like holding on for dear life while this flying monster is like soaring around and you're trying to stab it and bring it down. That would be like amazing. Yep. yep. I mean, that's, uh, you know, I had that moment happen in Dragon's Dogma 2 with the yeah. getting on the Griffin, and it just took me where we were going anyhow and falling down. And it's like, yeah, it, it, that was seamless. And you could see how that would benefit something like Monster Hunter. Yeah. Uh, the Witcher 4, meanwhile, has more than 400 people working on it. Full production begins this year. Uh, from This is from Darren Bonthius at GameSpot. Development on the, uh, the Witcher 4, codenamed Polaris, has taken another step forward as CD Projekt Red revealed that it has 403 employees working on it. Uh, earlier this year, joint CEO Adam Badowski, Badowski, Badowski had mentioned how he was aiming to have around 400 people on the next mainline Witcher game. This is roughly two thirds of CDPR's total workforce. And according to uh, the other joint CEO, uh, Mike, Michael Norokowski, this will allow the production phase of the game to begin later this year. Early in the development of Polaris, Nowakowski mentioned how the game had just 17 people working on it, as most of the staff had been reorganized and sent to work on other projects following the release of Cyberpunk's 2077's uh, F Phantom Liberty expansion. Cyberpunk 2077 still has 17 pe people now providing support, while other projects like Orion, Sirius, and Hadar have 47, 37, and 20 people working on them, respectively. Um, so yeah. I mean, not surprising that CD Projekt Red is going all in again on The Witcher, uh, but they have the bulk of the team now preparing to go into full development. Right now, I'm sure they're in, like you know pre-dev, where they're coming up with the art, the style, the the uh, you know the, the guides for like what they're going to make, and then they'll go actually start making the game. I suppose later this year. Um, Witcher Four, where's your expectation level? Are you excited? Are you glad they're returning to The Witcher? Yeah, I'm I'm happy that they're returning to The Witcher. It's it's an important franchise for them. Um I I think uh, for the most part uh CD Project Red's standards are back to where they we expect them to be. Right. Um and like the issue for um Cyberpunk, which is the game that probably made them take a hit to their reputation the most um the issue wasn't around like story it was just execution no. of a lot of like the gameplay stuff and maybe some of the technical side and the the kind of narrative and character stuff was always good in that game um so I, at the very least you can say baseline we can expect the witcher 4 to still have 
good ideas in it in terms of narrative and quests and story. So that's very, very exciting. I think they're now at a point where this kind of spread of uh, workforce and projects on who's who's on it is is necessary to make the make sure they give themselves the best chance of not repeating what happened with Cyberpunk. Um, and I I feel good about the what, what they're working on. Like I I am very weirdly I'm most excited about that Witcher One remake. Right. Um, Witcher One is really cool, and I feel like it's. It feels a bit Resident Evil remakey, where it's like that is the one game that probably a lot of people may not have played, and it's so hard to play right now. Um, it's dated and it's hard to find, and it ain't a good experience. So if Correct. they can update that game, that's three the first three Witcher games, the trilogy that are available and very, very, very playable now. I would love if they put that game out and then did like a here's the the first arc of Geralt's, uh, you know, life or whatever it may be. Uh, here it is, the trilogy, and as one pack, as they move on to a second trilogy. Um, uh, at this point, I think they're like, I, I can't, I don't know when they stopped or if they stopped using the novels as like a foundation. That must have happened already, but I do wonder if, uh, I think this probably is like an original story at this point. Yeah, I think so, um, yeah. But I, I'm, I am interested in that, um, where that goes, and I'm interested in seeing if they stick to the format of the the last game, which is obviously critically acclaimed, um, and just do another open world with similar combat. If it was up to me, I would love to see them work on combat a bit more. Um, yeah, agreed. Uh, that was the part of The Witcher 3 that I struggled with the most. I don't think it's got particularly great combat. I think it's got functional service or combat and the ideas behind it, like the um, you know, making potions and preparing right. for it. Preparing for um, it. That, that stuff did work for me, yes. That stuff was great. Um it's when you're actually fighting where it's like, ah, it's not particularly good. I do wonder if they're gonna work work on that a bit more. I assume they will and make it a little more punchy and a little more exciting to do. Yeah, it's a, it's a different yeah. gaming landscape than when Witcher 3 came out, where I think the expectations exactly. for combat are set a lot higher than they were even then. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, yeah. But overall, like, CD Projekt Red going for broke right now, which is they can really do that between uh, the remake, the new Witcher, and setting up a brand new studio to work on the next Cyberpunk. Um, good for them, man. They're, they're one of those developers where it's like, oh, yeah, you guys are absolutely popping off and... You got you got ideas uh, so far. For the most part, you've executed on everything you wanted to do pretty well. Um, but yeah, good job. I'm excited for the future of CDPR. Yes, uh, and I you know yeah I all I echo all that. I think um, that this is a game that they are going to return to, and I think they're going to be be willing to take a lot of risk while also sticking to their core of making a very strong quest based game. Right, like just strong quest storytelling. If they nail that, they can take some risks in some other areas. What that looks like is, is up for them to decide. Uh, although I think I mostly agree with you. I want them to focus on getting some combat that I click with a little bit more. I think that is usually why I have bounced off Witcher 3 whenever I've gone to play it, um, where I'm like, yeah, I, I, these quests are interesting in a way that a lot of game quests are interesting to me. I'm, uh, that's not usually, usually why I come to games. And then I'm like, okay, no, there's these monsters and you got to prepare for these fights. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And then I go out there and actually fight him and not not having the best time. So I think I usually mm -hmm. bounce off at that point. So I think that them taking the chance to rework these things, work within, I think this is the one where they're starting to move over to the Unreal Engine, maybe working with an engine that is more established where they don't have to spend so much time just doing maintenance on it and um, you know updating the tech debt and mm -hmm. things like that. Maybe that frees them up to focus more on that sort of thing. I'm hopeful. Yeah. Um, and yeah. then yes, the... Witcher 1 remake is the it seems like the other main thing that they're working on right now while they have these other projects that are are bubbling in the background um and I would love to see what that looks like uh if if everyone sort of just does what Capcom does with Resident Evil I think that would be fantastic and I hope that's exactly what happens here. Yeah. I'm I'm very excited about this stuff. Uh yeah. I all, the, that team has been very good about adding to the walls in yes. a meaningful way whether that's you know uh, the Witcher 3 Blood and Wine expansion or the Cyberpunk Phantom Libby expansion. So I'm excited how they expand on those worlds again. Uh, well, I mean, sticking with CD Projekt, it is, uh, and, you know, this kind of leans, uh, takes away from what you were saying, like, hey, what, what are they doing with the, the book, the stories, like their, their IP? Well, they do have a control over the lot, a lot of the IP now, and so CD Projekt is considering licensing, licensing out its Cyberpunk and or the Witcher IP 
to mobile developers. This is from Chris Scullion of VGC as well. CD Projekt is considering licensing out its Cyberpunk or The Witcher IP for use in mobile games. As part of a Q&A following an earnings conference for the publisher's fiscal year 2023 earnings, one caller asked, have you considered licensing either of your big IPs to third parties to make mobile games? Uh, they then asked how this would work from a business standpoint, whether it would be a one-off licensing fee or a profit-sharing agreement. Joint CEO Michael Nowakowski replied that the publisher was indeed looking at the possibility, but that nothing had been set in stone yet. The answer is pretty simple here, he replied. The answer is yes, we are considering such a move. In fact, we are pursuing through, cons through converse conversations opportunities like that. Uh, we have nothing to announce just yet, but when the time comes, we would. As for a one-off or other business model related to any such potential, potential partnership, we would not comment on the specifics here, to be honest, but plus there is nothing in place that we're talking about. Um, I think that this is probably the right move for a, a company like CD Projekt where they, have, they did have that shaky start with Cyberpunk. They need to be focused on the games that they make and they don't need to be like spreading out their, their resources to be like, and now we're also making the mobile game and mm. we're making the new board games and all this other stuff and we're getting distracted. Work with a team that makes that stuff if you are going to pursue that angle. And of course they're going to, there's a lot of money to be made if they were to put out um, something inspired by Cyberpunk on mobile devices, even if it's just like, um, I, I don't know, it could be like a gotcha game, it could be a, a visual novel, who knows, but they probably could make that make sense. Uh, but partnering with someone instead of making it, making it themselves makes a ton of sense to me. What do you think? Yeah. I, the other thing is, like, I I feel like we should say this because it happens all the time and maybe people don't realize it happens is uh, executives, when they ask these questions, and it, they will say yes to pretty much everything because it is behooves them to Good do point. that because it means that they are for people who are having you know, business considerations in terms of company like CD Projekt Red, they are exploring opportunities, which is like, oh, these guys are, these folks are staying on top of it. I'm confident in my investment or whatever it may be. Like they have uh -huh. to, if there's someone says, are you making mobile games at a time when mobile games are super profitable or the wider non, you know, educated, non, not person, not in the deep trenches of gaming thinks that they're super profitable. They go, yeah. We're, we're thinking about that. Yep, right. Yep. Yep. And, and like very if, good point here because it's, it's not like he was like, here's our mobile strategy. Someone asked him yeah. specifically, are you doing this? And he was like, yes. We're, yeah, we're, we're, thinking, we're, about we're it. thinking about that. Yes. Well, he said, like, we have had discussions. We are not doing anything right now. Yes. We are. We are. But that can be a way to just like get get people off your ass. Right. It's a, the same thing happens with like blockchain stuff. Some companies are more like into it, like Ubisoft, but others, they were a bunch that were like, yeah, we're looking into it. And they had no intention of looking into it. It's just because you don't want people to be like, why aren't you chasing this trend that is clearly making a lot of money? So yep. that is a very real possibility. And the reason I say that is because for the most part, CDPR knows what works for them and what doesn't and what works for their IP and what doesn't. I would be very surprised if they're like, hey, we ported The Witcher 3 to your iPhone. Like, that would be wild. Whereas, you know, they, they're right. more likely to do something like, hey, Gwent, you know, another version of Gwent is here and it's, yes, and it's on, on your phone. Or, I don't know, some element of cyberpunk that is, you know, a that works on a phone that, that, uh, that they work on separately or, or like, get someone else to work on. I don't think that we're going to have, like, Cyberpunk Match 3 game, like, immediately. It will be something else. Right. Um, but, yeah, I, 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 if they want to do that, go for it. I, I also feel like I, they're not in the business of, like, driving their IPs into the ground as quickly as possible by making money off of them. They currently are a studio that is built on two franchises. One primarily, Witcher right. and Cyberpunk. And I think they're very aware of the fact that those are the bedrock of their studios and they don't want to, you know, tarnish them in any way. I think they're um, very hesitant after Cyberpunk. I think they're like, yeah, hey, exactly. we, we have to get these things right. Yeah, they they know. I mean, Cyberpunk was the one thing where they, like, fumbled it a bit, but they it took them a little while, obviously, but that's how game development works. They course corrected very, very well. And, like, look at Phantom Liberty and, and the game that The Witcher 3, no, Witcher 3, Cyberpunk, is now and it's like oh man this is a completely different game and it plays incredibly well mm -hmm. um it's, it's a one of the best open worlds that exists now that you can play especially if you're into that rpg style uh gameplay but yeah i 
I think a lot of this might just be like hand waving uh, people away. Just be like, yeah, we're looking at it. Uh, we've had discussions when we've got nothing now, but we'll figure it out. Right. And and again, like even if they were pursuing it, if they, if they are pursuing it, they are going to hand it off to someone else. This is not about taking their mind share away from what they're actually working on. And, and no. cause you know, yeah, m- mobile can be very profitable, profitable, but it's also, um, you know, crapshoot. Like it's very yeah. difficult to know what's going to do well and what's not. And, you know, if you have something that, that is successful, then the, the good, the good thing about mobile gaming is, is it could be something like that monopoly go game. We talked about a few weeks ago where it's like they're here. We have the math. If we spend a dollar, acquiring a user we get four dollars out of them so let's just put in as many dollars as we possibly can because we're getting four dollars back every time it's a machine that just works if you have one of those it's totally worth it um making one of those is is again it's a crapshoot so it's, it's a distraction it's also i might be misreading this but from what i can tell it's less of a it's less of an interest in major game publishers to take their ip there because it feels like now more than i'll ever it's really hard to make even your own IP stand out in in the mobile game market because, yes. like you said, it is a crapshoot. And people, I don't know, can you? I can't think of a mobile game sensation that has happened in the last few years where it's pushed through to like mainstream uh, awareness. The the last one I can think of is what was that fruit game that everyone was into? Oh, um, Suica game? No, no, Suica game is the other one. Yeah, but like the from a different angle. That, that that match three sweet I don't know what it's called, but it's hard it's hard to um uh no no one in chat knows either so yeah <laughs> I'm probably remembering it wrong it was it's that annoying match three game that literally everyone played and I couldn't escape from Candy Crush that's the one oh Candy Crush oh yeah that, that's fruit, really like uh, 2012 like that's the yeah thing. exactly that's, yeah. yeah and beyond that it's been like small things like right you know we've had we've had stuff like. Genshin will appear, and that's major because of Gacha and that kind of stuff. Right. But I feel like Genshin and a lot of the Hoyoverse stuff is built for mobile, and they are a one of the few mo- standout mobile developers. Right, and those I feel do like break this, through to a certain extent, but even exactly. not to like, down the mainstream mainstream. I've, I think we're beyond the point where you can be like, we've made Assassin's Creed for mobile and expect it to right. pop off because people aren't paying attention to it, and it's really it's still really difficult for major IPs to push through the noise of just the sheer numbers of games that are out there and how hard it is. I mean, like, Apple still hasn't fixed their uh, discoverability issues their curation is borderline useless and it's just like you have to know what you're looking for when you go into it so i realize it's less of an investment less of a like interest from major developers to be like we can quickly make some good money off of this mobile game based on our ip and people are like "Eh, it's not worth the risk we're gonna make a mobile game we'll make something like good and then put some effort into marketing it so that people actually know it's there and i feel like that's too much for for a studio like cdpr right now they're just not interested in that right and what they are interested in is probably making a lot of money from their next game uh just like they did from cyberpunk cyberpunk 2077 has earned 752 million dollars so far um now that's like I think you could look at, well, you know, a lot of games make over a billion if they're like some of these biggest games ever. But it's like this, uh, all things considered, uh, um, not a small st- company, but a smallish company relative to like the biggest publishers in the world. Like Ubisoft employs 14,000 people or something like that. And there's under 500 people at CD Projekt Red working on multiple games. And then at the same time, they're also primarily primarily located in Central Eastern Europe where labor is a little bit less a little bit less expensive than it is than it is in a lot of other places. So $750 million is a ton of money. Um the game originally made $351 million in its first year and then that dropped off in a, b- b- a big way in 2021, but since then uh their sales have improved in 2022 and 2023, so they've climbed back up. <laughs> Not to the initial levels, but of course, but they continue to see more and more sales, which is something we would expect based on this sentiment around Cyberpunk. So they made a lot of money from that game. If they could put out another Witcher game that will probably will make between 750 to a billion dollars when it comes out, uh, that's going to be their focus. They know they can make that happen instead of how do you make a mobile game that gets attention? Do you have to put do we need waifus? Do we need to put waifus in The Witcher to make, you know, to be like a Genshin Impact? Who knows how you actually make that work? And but like you look at Monopoly Go, it's like they, that seems like some machine, a magical machine. How do you replicate that? You don't with what you have over there at CD Project Red, but what you can do just make a new Witcher, makes a lot of money, and then go back to Cyberpunk at some point and do the same thing. The Witcher doesn't need waifus. It has it has multiple already. We're fine. 
That's right. It's got yeah. the Yennefer waifus. Yes. Um, the Yennefers. Let's go. All right. Team Yennefer all the way. If you're Team Triss, I don't want to speak to you. Oh, damn. Don't tell anybody. Don't tell them. Uh, all right. We're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we have a lot more headlines to get to, including Embracer saying dumb shit. Oh, I can't wait. All right, we are back, and as promised, Embracer says it's too early to start buying developers again. This is from Jonas Mackey <laughs> at Game Reactor. Uh, for several several years, it seemed like Embracer was buying spectacular IPs, developers, publishers, and other types of assets on a monthly basis, because it was. But last year, it stopped when they ran out of money, uh, leading to a heavily criticized restructuring program with a flood of layoffs, closed developers, shut down games, and divestments. Just yesterday, it was confirmed that Embracer has now also sold off Borderlands developer Gearbox, and in connection with this, CEO Lars Wingefers had a financial meeting with his investors, where he explained that the restructuring is now over. He was then asked if they will start buying new studios and publishers, publishers again, something he did not rule out, but he answered that it is not time for that quite yet. Looking to do more mergers and acquisition deals, I think it's way too early to start talking about restarting the M&A engines again. Um, I should fucking hope so, Tam. What are what, like? Why oh. even say it like that? Just be like, yeah, just I, be like, no. Just say no. The Embracer Group is they are the Mr. Burns of video games industry. <laughs> they just do not know the how evil they are and how everything they say makes them look even worse. It's mm -hmm. just so stupid. Um, it's like, yeah, Lars, you're currently selling shit for uh -huh. half the price that you bought it. Maybe you shouldn't fucking buy more shit, you dumb dumb. Yeah. I, I don't understand it <laughs> one bit. I can't how imagine no one, where we'll be soon no enough one, for them to do this again. How is no one checking them? Like, I don't, where is this money coming from? Where is your daddy? They need yeah, to come where in there. Where is your you dad to come in and be like, on stop the spending the money? Yeah. You are doing nothing with them. You're buying studios, shutting them down, and then selling the IP. What are you doing? It's yeah. crazy. There is huge fail sun energy with all this, and yeah. yet he's out there still talking about this stuff. Okay. I mean, at least he's saying that it's like it's too soon. Just say, I can't imagine a world in which we start, like, put out a game. Like, release games. Make money with what you have if you're selling right now. Talk about that as being the answer, not like we restarted the M&A engines. Yeah, it's baffling. Have a, have a success story. Like, you have zero. I can't think of an, an Embracer game that has been successful. I, I, the, I, they had Dead Island 2, sold a million copies. Oh, they Dead had, Island. Okay, they've there had you some go. games. Uh, there was a couple others that did, but, but they don't ever talk about those successes. I, he just talks I about forgot selling, Dead Island 2 came out. Yeah he, like, yeah, he talks about selling studios and buying studios. They don't ever talk about the actual games that they put out, even though no. there have been a handful of them that have been d performing decently to very good. Um, but that, like, that actually doesn't fit into what they're trying to do over there. Clearly, what they're trying to do is they were trying to grow through acquisitions, and that was what was making the line go up, which is just a dumb thing as evidenced by where this company is today. Yeah. Just frustrating. So I, frustrating. I, I have a specific dislike of Embracer because they still have Crystal. They still have Crystal Dynamics, don't That's they? That's correct. They have Crystal Dynamics. Doesn't seem like they are going to sell off Crystal Dynamics because yeah, they have that I, deal already. With, yeah, with Amazon and... And, and, and Microsoft us. making... um. Crystal Dynamics is the one that's working on Perfect Dark, right? Yes, 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 yes. yes. I just, uh, I, I need them to be unembraced so they can do something with Legacy of Kane. Like, I just, please, I I don't know if Embracer will ever, maybe Embracer's got so much money that someone from Crystal can go to them and be like, everyone wants this game, we can make it. Uh, yeah, but good. what it seems like right now is stuff doesn't happen in Embra at Embracer until there is something like a big deal with a Microsoft or an Amazon to make yeah. something. And then yeah. if, you, if you don't have one of those, Embracer's like, we just got to sell you because we can't afford you. So I, I don't know, Tam. I, I would not get your hopes up for Embracer <laughs> making the game that you want. I'll, I, I will never, ever, ever give up on Legacy of Kane. No, ever. don't give up. I don't want to see that. I, want, I don't want to live I, in that I world. Will, I will... I will to the day I die, on my dying breath, I'll be like, <laughs> remake Soul Reaver, and then die. He's a vampire? Is that what it is? <laughs> is that what that game is? He's a vampire with the, the he's does a, have a bottom uh, jaw? He's not a vampire per se. He's a wraith of sorts. Okay. So he, he technically, he was a vampire, and then he transcended uh, and grew wings before his, his, oh, oh, his master, Cain, 
Um, right. And because of that, he I was I saw this punished. episode of Raw, so I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it was great. He was thrown into the Lake of the Dead and uh, b- brought back as a soul wraith by Morbius. Morbius? Morbius. 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 So, um, so, okay, so he, the elder, he's souls, bought, right? No, he's brought back by the Elder God, sorry. So instead of, instead of, he was dissolved, basically. So instead of sucking blood, he now reaves souls. Okay. And it is fucking cool. I, I keep saying this. There isn't a better intro cut scene in existence than the start of Soul Reaver. I, I will die on that hill. I think anyone could sit down and watch the start of Soul Reaver, that cut scene, and be like, I need to see what happens next. It is... Top to bottom, every word written for it is perfection. Did they ever even remaster well. it? Like, did they release nope. a re- That's no. Nope. That's... They uh, they unremastered it by right. taking it off shit. Like, yeah. it's not available on Steam and shit like that. They, sh- they should but, do oh that my at God. the very least. Because I, I, I did try to play the Dreamcast version. And I'm like, this. I, I think this just needs a, a few bumped up, uh, uh, you know, production values and, and uh, quality of life features and here and there. And then I think it would probably be completely playable for me. Dude, I I, I don't know. Have you seen the intro cutscene? I, I must have, but I, there's a chance I skipped over it because I'm a bad person. Watch it. Now. Watch it. It is, it is on. But you, after watching it, you'll be like, I am. I cannot believe people well, are doing something you with know, this. This is a good idea. Uh, maybe a UPF or even a BCR where we do a tier list of uh, intro cutscenes. I would be down for that. I would 100% be down for that. And Soul Reaver would be number one. Okay. I, I like it. All right. Let's, let's figure out a way to do that. Uh, Eddie Goro joins the Tekken 8 roster next week. Reveal trailer Goro. confirms. Yeah, Has Gordo. It forearms? <laughs> Eddie Gordo, man, yeah. I'm, I was like <laughs> reading it this morning. My like, Gordo, Gordo, not Goro. What are you talking? I used to Goro. play as Eddie Gordo. I do the love the idea of Eddie Goro. Goro with, with He's forearms. doing capoeira with forearms. <laughs> <laughs> like just or, or just Goro doing capoeira. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is from Andy Robinson at VGC. Classic fighter Eddie Gordo will be the first DLC character added to Tekken 8 next week. Band and Dynamco has announced on Friday the company released a revealed trailer for Eddie uh, for Gordo, who will be released on April 1st at 4 p.m. Pacific time uh, for season pass holders and available to purchase for everyone else on April 4th. Eddie will be followed by three more characters set to be released in the summer, autumn, and winter, making up the game's season one character content. Um, nice. I love Eddie Gordo, definitely like the, mm-hmm. one of the ca- early characters. I was like, This is my fighting game character. And even when people because would you complain. can press circle and uh, right. X over and over again right, with forward spam. and win. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Even when people complain about spamming, I'm like, yeah, I know, but he rules. And then also, yeah. I, was, I was super into uh, only the strong uh, at that time. Capoeira was just cool back then, yeah. and I'm like, yeah. it's time for Capoeira to come back. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited I, about I, this. I, uh, Capoeira as a fighting style is incredible. Um, fun fact: Did you know that uh, there is a game developer that is a very high level practitioner of Capoeira? Is there? Yeah, Dinga from Arcane is a Capoeira. Um, I'm so glad you uh, didn't say Kojima. <laughs> I would love it if <laughs> Kojima did Capoeira. That would be so good. That would be so good. Oh, my God. Pro- he probably does do it, actually, now that we're saying it out loud. Um, <laughs> I, I, game on Game on stage doing Capoeira. <laughs> Banana way, banana yeah. way, banana. Uh, Minecraft is reportedly getting a native PS5 version. This is from Andy Robinson at VGC. That's according to PlayStation Game Size, a social media account that regular, regularly reveals games early by trolling the back end of Sony's console store. Currently, only the PlayStation 4 version of Minecraft is available on the PlayStation 5 via backwards compatibility. The Xbox version was recently updated to support 4K, uh, though users have long been have long been awaiting for an optimized version for current-gen consoles. Last year, Xbox Series X slash S version of Minecraft appeared on various rating, rating sports. However, in a statement to VGC, Microsoft claimed the listings were part of standard approvals it regularly go- goes through with uh, various rating sports. One feature that could potentially be supported in an optimized version of, for, of the game for current gen consoles is ray tracing, which Microsoft has been teasing since before the platform's launch in 2020. Um, I this isn't like the, that big a deal, but the P fans have been asking for PS5 and Xbox Series X slash S versions of Minecraft, and it's been weird that Microsoft has been pushing it off for so long. Um, but yeah, it seems like it might finally be happening. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Uh, and I like was saying, I highly doubt it will have ray tracing. Ray tracing was one of those things where Microsoft talked about it in a big way early on, and then they got very quiet about it in Minecraft. That seems like it's probably not going to happen here. Yeah, Raymond tracing hasn't got a place in <laughs> in Minecraft for now. Uh, good for PS5 people. I cannot tell you how 
disengage from the Minecraft world I am now. I'm just like, Minecraft yeah. exists. It's basically the oxygen of the gaming industry. Yeah. You don't think about it anymore. It's there. It's you there. You need it. You're breathing it in always. It's creating the worst kind of children out there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Listen, it's, 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 it's no Roblox when it comes to that, please. <laughs> true, true, true. Uh, um, yeah. I, I, you know, Minecraft, one of those games that, like, you, I mean, God, oxygen of the industry is a good way of describing it. Always there, always in the background. Um, and I'm, I'm cur always curious. It's like, yeah. You, you know what this is really for me? If this finally comes out and they do do a native version, it does somehow, <laughs> do -do. It does somehow mark that, oh, the generation has actually begun in some ways because so many of these big games that people have been playing, uh, they were playing just the last-gen versions uh, 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 using backward compatibility. Yeah for so long and it's like what's the difference why would we even put out a native version it doesn't make the game look any better uh it would just kind of be a waste of our resources and now here we are i think they're realizing enough people are on the next gen systems they might as well just move it to there yeah yeah oh we should play some minecraft i would love to play some minecraft that isn't aimless with some people you know what i mean i've never played anything beyond the i played minecraft many years after it came out and there's like a stream of me playing it for the first time and realizing how cool minecraft is and then like <laughs> me and like dave for and the uk team is like this has been out for 20 years. What yeah. the fuck have you been doing? <laughs> Jan, Jan, I know Jan loves playing Minecraft. He's saying please in chat right now. I, um, if, if there is a, because one of the people that we used to work with, Mike Rougeau, who now works at the on the Minecraft team, like at Microsoft. Oh, he does? I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, he makes the, the wildest Minecraft, like escape room style shit that I'm like, this is, how do you have time for this? Like, there, it is unreal. There are some cool adventure modes in some of the DLC. I know that the, the Mario stuff in the, in the Nintendo version of Minecraft has a Mario oh. adventure and stuff like that. But Jan wants to kill the dragon. I think that sounds fantastic. Did you see that lad who's making Bloodborne in Minecraft? No, I didn't. It looks... I'm... There's some screenshots where I'm like, this looks better than Bloodborne. What's going on? <laughs> I'm like, how is this happening? Um, but yeah, that person's on Twitter. Um, and let me see if I can find the Twitter account. Um, yes, it's called Potonomy underscore P O T O M Y. But I I looked at some of those screenshots and I was like, this is unreal. You should bring that up if you can. Yeah, I'll see if I can get that um, going. Hang it on. is. It is. It is wild, and I'm like, once this is done, I will reinstall Minecraft and fill my hard drive with the trillions of gigabytes it takes to run this thing. It's <laughs> crazy. <clears throat> but yeah, it's... P-O-T-O-M-A-N-Y? M-Y, M-Y, underscore on e each side. Okay. And then just the side-by-side -side screenshots are quite something, where you're like, how, how long did this take? There's like specific scenes where it's like, oh, here's the tower with the amygdala on it. I'm like, oh my god, hey, how did you do that? That's, that's all right. Wacky, wackity, schmackity. Let's see here. Uh, news assets. There we go. Oh my god, this looks incredible. I know. Like yeah, it is. Nuts. It's. It is, it that, is bananas. I mean, the, the one of the coolest things you can do to Minecraft is mess around with the lighting. Uh, engine mm. and i mean I, I, if you do ray tracing because you know they have the rtx version of minecraft on pc it is astounding um but you can do a lot of stuff even if you're not using ray tracing so yeah that yeah. looks fantastic wow yeah i don't it's this, atmospheric this person, yeah a, this person seems to be doing it solo yeah. but yeah uh, but it's, follow them on twitter they also have like a patreon as well if you want to you know support them but they yeah they are at it and I think the intent is to recreate the entire game, um, including the DLC. There's some uh, screenshots that I saw that look like it's from the old Hunters. So, damn, man. Man, that I looks hope, really I cool. Pulled that off. Yeah, it looks so good. Cool. All right. It looks um, so good. Let's see. Uh, last thing here. Uh, we were kind of traveling, moving around uh, <laughs> last week when uh, Marvel 1943 Rise of the Hydra uh, was announced and talked about in a major way. Or they, they kind of gave some details about it. Um so Darren Bonthe, who's over at GameSpot, did a whole you know primer on what's happening with it. Uh, it did get like revealed fully at GDC 2024 as part of the State of the Unreal presentation. Um, it is they don't have a date for it yet, but it is coming to PC, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S. It will be using some awesome new technology in Unreal that makes the characters look incredibly realistic, uh, and I think it looks pretty promising. Uh, I think uh, if I'm 
you know, a person who's not as interested in Marvel as I once was, which is definitely where I'm at right now. I think them doing some fun stuff with these characters, Captain America, uh, Black Panther, um, ha having a strong identity for these characters in the way that the Marvel's Avengers game did not from Square Enix. Um, I, I don't know. I, something about this looks very promising. I think also just Amy Hennig getting actually to put out a game and not getting uh, a sort of uh, have the, having it having it like fall apart halfway through because EA loses their you know their stomach for it. I think that's mm. just very exciting to me as well. So yeah, it looks very promising. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to see what happens with this. It feels like a very uh, left field idea. It's not the obvious thing, you know. Right. It feels it feels like this is a game that was greenlit because people had an idea and not because people wanted to make a game based on Marvel characters because right. it prints money. It feels like they were like, well, we want to make this specific game, and this is the story that we want to make. Um, so I, that is exciting. Um, I, I, I hope that it does live up to the expectations. That Those like videos that they released with like uh, Captain America being Captain America looked wild. Um, and I think some AI shit was involved in that or something, but um, it looks... It looks real nice. Yeah, in, they, they're in using that. the Unreal, like, meta-human thing, uh, yeah. which is, yeah. I, I, and I think there is some, like, AI stuff involved with that, but I think it's also just um, the, the, the their character creation tools they've been working on for a very long time. Yeah. And uh, I think that if you have artists working with that, it's amazing what they can accomplish as evidenced by what that Marvel 1943 trailer do looks we, like. Do we know what kind of it, gameplay is it's just third person right I, I i think the expectation is that it fully is going to be an amy hennig sort of third person action adventure s story game yeah okay cool great i mean you're probably uh, gonna I'm end down up on for train that. at some point which hey let's do oh, it oh i love that yeah, let's do too. it um I, I will take that any day over games and service stuff now i mean not you know how you don't have to be coy about it we know that you're running home right after this to go play joker and suicide squad joker listen, just dropped listen that is completely incorrect because <laughs> i am already home so i will be turning around <laughs> uh, yeah i've not heard anyone talking about that but the joker's in suicide squad now so yeah uh, i'm i deleted that game <laughs> yeah i Part of me starts to feel a little bit bad because it's like, God, they worked so long on that game and I don't even yeah. hate it, but whatever. Yeah. Whatever. I can't, I can only spare so many, so many spaces in my heart for video games right now. Uh, all right. We're going to get to a poll question while I get that set up. Tam, why don't you tell people what you have going on, where they can find you? Uh, or if you don't want to be found, tell them that. Uh, what do we have going on? We got UPF. What's UPF today? Uh, UPF is we're going to play some South Park, that the, the South Park shooter game, a little bit of that because it's not very good. Yikes. Um, and then I'm going to do some, um, what's that? Uh, the Pepper Grinder. Oh, Pepper Grinder is good. I don't know if people are playing that game, but you should be playing that game. It's, it's a hot, like five, six hours. Right. It's like, and it's like fully out now. So I just, I got it on Steam. I'm going to, I'm going to yeah, play that. Yeah. I'm excited about that. And then I had another game I was going to play. Uh, but I don't have it here, so I can't remember. But yes, it, it'll be kind of a fun, like, grab bag sort of thing today. So we'll go for yeah. that. And then uh, BCR, yeah. what's going to happen at, at, after that? We are going to talk about our game of the year so far. And then I might oh. talk about some of these other I, I've, like, had a little bit more adventure time in Dragon's Dogma, too. So we'll talk about that as well. Nice, Things nice. Like that. Yeah, that, that's exciting. And then you can find me everywhere at Tomorrow H. Oh, Stellar um, Blade demo. That's the other one. That's right. I'm playing uh, the Stellar nice. Blade demo. Yes. Nice, nice. Uh, God, I want to play that game so much, but also... <sighs> It's fucking goon pilled so hard that yeah. game, isn't it? Like they're, they're, they're <laughs> determined to like ruin it. Like, it's, like, I, guys, it's okay. Listen, like, we, no one has said it's thing, not right? okay to be horny. Go be horny. I, I don't give a shit. I, I am all. I am all for like making characters that are sexy and yeah. buxom and got their tatas out uh, to a degree, but like. Don't make them shiny as well. Like, and, and like <laughs> it's, that's the problem. I look at it. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> Fuck it, what's going on? Like uh, you yeah. cannot escape it. It's the only thing you can see. Tam, have it's you seen like, chat cool. recently? What are they saying? Uh, well, well, well have you seen on? the new emote? Uh, no. Okay. Well, oh, the, 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 yeah, me, me being blinded. Yeah, yeah you being blinded. There briefly. you go. So there's yeah, Tam playing play for Stellar that. Blade. That's yeah. me playing Stellar Blade. <laughs> 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 but it, it is like so prominent, like it's a horny game that it's just like, oh come on, man. It just undermines everything, if you know what I mean. Like, it, I mean, it, it feels a little unserious, right? That's what it feels like to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, I like the only time, even Bayonetta is covered up. 
Like Bayonetta is the number one horny action game character. I, and again, and again, this game can exist. I will probably enjoy it. We'll see. People are saying oh, the yeah. combat's like easy Sekiro. Whatever, that sounds fine. Excuse me. Easy yeah. Sekiro. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, right. The, the, I knew you would be offended. Um, but but like Bay Bayonetta owns her sexuality. This game does just feel like this character yeah. is there to be gazed upon and whatever. Yeah. Again, I am not really complaining. Uh, but to champion it is some basic bitch shit. Like, you guys got to get some better stuff in your yeah. life if this is the thing you've been looking for. First yeah. of all, there are like 50 of these every day on Steam. Chill out. Uh, go play that succubus game where she like just beats stuff people up and then and then yeah i i having said that i am excited to try stellar blade yeah it, it's very much my kind of game um well i hope it's good yep and yes yeah, so now play some hentai golf you're right everybody hell yeah uh all right uh poll question let's get to that uh how are you feeling about the future of video games 29 percent says great i'm not worried 55 percent says good i'm somewhat worried and 16% says bad, I'm really worried. And I think, you know, that that like middle part where, you know, good, but I have some worries, that's probably a fair place to be right now. I think um, Sam was talking to Mike about this last night where it's like uh, the, uh, seeing that number of 60% of playtime is spent on games that came out more than five years ago. These black hole games like Fortnite and, and, and PUBG and, and, and Apex you Legends. Fortnite? Fortnite. You just said Fortnite. F F Fortnite. Uh, <laughs> it's, I, I, at a certain point, I do get kind of like, man, how do how does anything stand out in a world where everyone's just yeah. playing those and kids are like, I don't need a console because I already have those games. Uh, or even a PC because I already have those games on my phone. It does mm. feel like a challenging environment. So I have some concerns. But the I, video games, it always bounces back. At least so far. I think you should redo this poll after Stellar Blade is out and see what happens. Okay, there we go. The yeah. Stellar Blade <laughs> like, gaming. We're good. I'm not worried. <laughs> Stellar Blade <laughs> exists. <laughs> All right, that sounds good. Uh, and we do have a new poll uh, for now, though. And that is, are you going to try the Stellar Blade demo? Yes or no? Just curious oh, yeah. to see how many people are going to hop in on that. Uh, the oh, pe yeah. People make it make you think it's like this is the one game that actually matters this year. I'm like, oh, did they did they implement the uh, the bayonet uh, one one handed mode? Uh, no, but people are joking about like have modified my controller so I can play it one handed mode. So sick. Okay, there gotcha. you go. see, bayonet at least has guts, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Exactly. Here's the one handed mode. <laughs> ah, all right uh thanks for watching everybody tam thank you so much for spending today talking with me about video games i really appreciate as, it as always love doing it um i am now considering uh, a giant bomb stream of soul reaver um so do it i would listen i, I, I can, need i need someone to teach me to appreciate that game so yes yeah, i would love that maybe I'll, maybe i'll do that it's been i don't think i've really played soul reaver 2 in since the first time I played it. So maybe maybe that would be fun as well if I could because I think I can do like Soul Reaver one pretty quickly. If yeah. I do like a couple of four hour streams, it's pretty easy. I'll get lost in a couple of places because it's confusing and everything looks really weird. But right. The yeah. the 3D environments that is what I noticed is like these things are challenging <laughs> to navigate mentally for me. But yes. 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 Um but yeah maybe we'll do that. I would, I would love that. Uh, again, Tam, thank you again, everyone. Uh, thank you for watching. You're the best audience in gaming. Until next time, have a good one. Take care of yourself, and goodbye.